Shalika Lassiter and I am the collections and exhibition coordinator um, for Ava and I am here today for our face-to-face -face series with Sydney Foster. She is a Montgomery resident, a really dope creative director and a published photographer and my first question for you is what is creativity to you and do you consider yourself a creative? First of all, Shaleka, thank you for having me today. It's, it's truly an honor and I'm happy to be here to share a little bit of me with, with you and your audience. So creativity to me is truly freedom. It's a form of expression. I feel like creativity is love, it's not hate. And I feel like it's, it's a way to join us together as the mat, you know, in masses to unite us because it's everybody like taking their gifts and expressing them to everybody else and showing what they love and why they love it. Why do you consider yourself a creative? Um, I consider myself a creative because that's what, that's like my main goal in life is to unite people, no matter what color or what we believe in, um, you know, any like, Things that could divide us. My my main goal has been to unite people, especially black and brown folks, because we've been divided the majority of our lives. So every chance I get, I try to put all different types of people in the room and how I do it to this day, I have no clue how I do it. Um, I just really just go off of feelings and just, I feel like it's a part of the experience of experience art, experiencing art. So that's why I consider myself a creative. Like experiencing the art is also experiencing the people. Yeah. Would you say that's what excites you the most about the creative process? It is, it is. Like, it's one thing to create the work, but to see the people in the room, like their energy of just intermingling with one another. Like, I like to make my work interactive as possible. Yeah. But, if you, you know, for me, if you take my art away and just have the body of people in the room, that's mainly where my inspiration comes from because it's like, wow. And people realize so much and then people are constantly inspired after they leave. To me, that's the gift that keeps on giving. You want them to leave not just feeling something for that moment, but like to have something to think about continuously like throughout the week, throughout the month, lifetime yeah. type stuff. I want them to remember the sounds. I want them to remember what they drank, what they ate, how that made them feel, how certain conversations made them feel. Um, it's a totally emerging experience. Yeah, all senses. And it's mm -hmm. like, man, you know, how can I have this again? And my hopes are that somebody that was there can do the next one. You know, I, I always try to plant a bug or just plant into some, a plant a seed into someone else to be like, hey, how about you go do it, you know? Yeah, because it's like trying to figure out, help them figure out what their passions are. It's like, oh yeah, you can do that. Yep. How about you try this or try that way? If that didn't work, try this. You and know? a lot of the times I find that other creatives like up and coming and I was that person. And sometimes I, to this day, if I'm transparent, I can still be that person. We're scared to execute an idea because we don't know like how people will receive it, but people are just waiting you know, for you to put it out there to receive it and they'll receive it with open arms. I think it's important that we have mentors as well because it's cool seeing like the people that I like study photography under and now I have people asking me, hey, how do you do this and that? And it's like, I'm in their position. It's like, okay, I got to make sure I'm trying to lead them in the right direction and make sure they're expressing their content the way they want to express it. So, Yes, yeah, it's, really it's giving. Like it's an ecosystem. Like we need each other to continue to grow. Like I wish it. I don't even think it would be any other way. All right. Yeah. Um. So, what would you say when you do have down days? How do you keep yourself motivated and continue to have interest in your work and in photography? So when you say down, like an emotion or just days where I'm not in the field or? 
Um, they, I, like creators, creators block. Who creators block? Um, well, one thing's for sure. I'll hop off Instagram because I will like get depressed or just start feeling like I'm not doing anything. And I, I feel like I made a conscious decision in meditation today. But for me, um, I'll just disconnect, I'll disengage, and I'll just be present in where I am. Like, um, like right now, like I'm in my living room or I'm in my apartment. I'll like find another way. If I'm not doing photography, I'll find another way to get inspired by things around me and not on the internet, but just yes. like physical people or like colors, like. Um, I'm working on this one project that deals with, um, you know, like, uh, what's what's a good term? Just neighborhoods that aren't so great, you know, mm -hmm. I can be transparent, you know, the project. So, like, I'll just go and I'll be inspired because it's just like, what I'm down about today, somebody else, you know, is inspired in a way to keep going. So, mm -hmm. like, I'll so, and I'll have a conversation and that'll like inspire me to keep going. Or like this other thing I got going, you know, it's like based off of my apartment. Like I'm gonna turn it into something tangible, going back to those experiences when you, where, when you go to places. So I just kind of find other things to do to keep me motivated and inspired, especially in this time, cause I can't travel. Normally yeah. I would like, all right, I'm gonna plan to go here on this date because I'm getting to my breaking point and I'll fly out. And once I fly out and I experience New York for a few days, I'm like, man, this is refreshing. Like, I'm good to go. But now it's just like, I'm having to find things near me and close by to get, get me out of funks or I'll, I'll journal, like I said, I'll meditate go exercise or run and while I'm running I'll see something and I'm just like man this is so cool let me pull my phone out and take a quick picture of it so that's how I kind of keep myself motivated or interested in my work or last thing I may revisit some of my old work like I'll just kind of pan around so like I haven't hung up any of this stuff that's like in my living room but these are some of my first works when I started doing photography and I'm looking at them and I'm just like, wow, that 2017 seed was so inspired. Like, let's go figure out how to recreate some of these images and like yeah. different elements or like, let's just pull them back up and re-edit them. So that's how I'll keep myself going versus like, you know, scrolling on Instagram and comparing myself and doing things like that. Cause that'll do more damage than you just focusing on your inner self. It's like, let me, let me compare myself to myself. And see that's right. I, yeah. That's right. I mean, because looking at these images, I was looking at like, you know, I started to think about like, man, I grinded differently, or I was just so eager to do this, or just try this one thing, try this one light setup, or, you know, you, yeah. when you first start, you're more experimental versus, like, when you kind of get, you start to coast, and, like, it just feels normal to you. Because mm -hmm. it's like you get used to, I guess, the style or whatever you've established for yourself, mm -hmm. and then you don't want to go through that learning curve of something else. I guess it's hard as being a creative too, you have to uh, balance like, if this is your income, you have to balance the creative things you're really passionate about versus what actually makes money. So yeah. I guess that can, that definitely has an influence on your mental health too. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that out? So my work, my work versus work. So uh, when I'm not doing photography for myself, I'm serving in the military or I'm working as a staff photographer for the governor of Alabama. Um, and I just kind of, it's hot. Like that's something I'm trying to crack right now. Just balancing my norm versus no, let me say this, balancing Sydney A. Foster band to like work life that makes me money right now. Yeah. So I can like get Sydney A. Foster to where it's like, oh, it's mm -hmm. time to let this go. You know, I've done what I needed to do there and I'm grateful. 
Um, but now it's time to truly focus on see it. But for me, just on my off days, uh, working, researching, and on the weekends, working and researching. Um, and sometimes when I get off work, I'm just like, I'm tired right now, but let me, <laughs> let me put in a few hours and just do this. Because if I don't, you know, I'll get behind or, you know, I just, I never, you never get it done. And I don't want to become, or I don't want to, you know, get in a slump of, oh, let me just focus on my uh, stable nine to five. Mm-hmm. And everything else gets put in the in the background. And that's not what I want because the art thing is what keeps me going. It keeps me who, it, it's, it's me. That's why I'm me, because of my art. Because it, it kind of puts you in a, if you don't have the opportunity to be creative, it puts you in a space of like resentment to having to work those, the jobs that pay the bills. Um, so how would you say having to be like the work life and creative life, how has rejection played a part as far as affecting your creative process? So for me, rejection and I know people, you hear this all the time, but it made me truly, like, push myself even further. Like, when I couldn't, when I first started off, like, I could not get the help that I thought I was going to be able to get in Alabama and in Montgomery. So it pushed me to buy stuff, try it out. And I'm like, this ain't what I want it to look like. So let me go read more. Let me go research more. Or, you know, when I got real brave, I was like, let me reach out to this photographer in another state and see what happens. And then that that one no turns into a yes. And you're like, oh, snap. You know. So it for me, it was a lot of perseverance to get to where I am and just keep trying. Like, just a lot of trial and error. I'm not... Uh, a con- a, continuous well you're continuously networking yes a continu- just trying to see who gonna bite <laughs> like yeah i mean and you can't networking once you get a groove and once you figure out how to do it for you you have to nurture those relationships and they mm-hmm. have to be genuine and you can't just want things from people yeah um, you really you know you really have to build those relationships because you can want something get that one thing and then that's it. And then you're in your mind, you're in a cycle of continuing to do that. And it's like, you truly don't have that network because mm-hmm. you just wanted that one thing. So now yeah. it's like, it's more, you spend more energy doing that than building like genuine connections to, to grow and, and build. Because and like- that's, that's part of building that trust and building that trust within the community and forming that solidarity within our community and it's a team thing like you can't get there by yourself but yeah the challenges or the rejections they really pushed me to a place where I had no idea how I was gonna figure it out like no idea but you get so creative going back to creativity you get so creative when you know you get that note it's like well I'm gonna do that I'm gonna figure out how to do this you know if right I, my last dime trying to figure out how to do it you know but it makes you who you are it truly does build humility and you create some of your best work when you get rejected it's a process within itself I feel like so what was the work that you say really took off for you wow um the work that really took off for me. Mm. All right, I can tell you this. I can tell you it was summer of 17. I was in New York. First internship. I had, you know, I I've been to New York several times before 2017, but it was just like I'm going to have fun. I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going for nothing serious. So when I spent the summer in New York and I feel like the work I created in New York, um, really like, and I'll, I'll flash it on the screen if I can, but it really like 
to me, opened my eyes to be like, you know, hey, like, I really can do that. That's the image I created while I was in New York. Everything that could have went wrong with that shoot went wrong. Like, losing stylists or we were supposed to shoot outside, it rained, and I got a, I think my last week in New York, I, I got a hotel and we couldn't shoot outside. So I was like, look, y'all, we just gone, we're gonna shoot in this room and we're gonna make it work. I don't know how, but we're gonna figure it out. It's gonna be dope. So that was the set of work that really like sent me into overdrive. A lot of people received it well. And I started getting hits from like LA or, you know, just all over the world, like London. I got stuff in magazines in London and it's just like, oh snap, you know, like this is happening for real. And I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting it. And it was the work that you wasn't even expecting when it gave you the most difficult time. And I waited so long to put it out. I think I waited six months because I was wow. like, I don't feel confident in any of this um so that was the work that took me i feel like national um but a project locally um was a project i shot here in montgomery in 2016 and it was a hair story i'm actually looking at three of the photos now but that was the first i feel like solo exhibition that i did as a photographer but I had the help of like dope, you know, the hairstylist, like Kim Willis, like she like did all the creative hair. That was the first time I was like, all right, see it, you, you don't have, this is not a, a group show that you're doing, this is you. So like, just do it, don't be afraid. <laughs> that got received so well. And I feel like on a local level, like that's what got the attention of the community. Um, and they're like, man, we want to come to more things like this. Like, why don't we have these things frequently? You know, mm -hmm. it made people feel like they weren't in Alabama, you know, but the thing is we got the talent and the assets here, like we said earlier, to make you feel, you know, just embrace your Alabama creatives and you don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the everybody has the tools. Everybody has their own specialty or niche that they're great at. We just got to work together. Ask each other for we, help. We have to work together. We do. Hey, what is the ultimate message that you want to give to people who view your work? Mm, it's changed since I first started. Um, I would say now the ultimate message that I want to give people when they see my work, uh, specifically women like embrace who you are don't be afraid of your voice um and the other part of that is know you're beautiful and just don't be afraid of the skin you're in like go out and do things unapologetically and for me it took so long to get to that point with my work because i was afraid of what people would think if i posted a picture of I don't know, somebody black with cornrows, you know, it took me so long to put that type of work out, but I had to realize in the process that I'm beautiful, I'm black, like, just do, <laughs> you know, like people will receive your work no matter what color they are, because they'll be able to find the beauty in it. Mm -hmm. And that's my thing, like being able to find the beauty in it to be free. I feel like we we lack there and every time somebody looks at my work I hope they can find freedom in it and just be able to embrace a thing that they may have been insecure about once upon a time. That is a wonderful message and I want to thank you for coming on here and giving us a taste of your life and your creativity and your work and I'm really looking forward to whatever you have cook, cooking up for That's us next. Best. It's my pleasure. I think the next thing will probably be at my apartment and I got to figure out how to get people in here safely. Well, I'm definitely excited to see what that turns into. Maybe something small group. We'll figure it out. But thank you so much for having me. This has been great. You know, like it's always a great opportunity to just share your voice. So thank you for allowing me to do that. And I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to give your voice a platform. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank <laughs> you.